Okay, guys. Today, I want I'm doing an interview with an amazing guest. I have watched their uh, videos, and it's very informative and fun. And I'm Iron Man, and I'm gonna be blasting holes in the walls. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Awesome, Johnny. We're doing great. Yes. Doing great. Glad to be here. Yes. Uh, can you introduce to yourself to the audience, please? Sure. I'm Heather. And I'm David. From Zen Rose Garden. Welcome. Oh, we're going to just do our like video sure. intro. Um, yeah. yeah. So Zen, we're Heather and David from Zen Rose Garden, and we have a healing practice here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we do all kinds of stuff just to help you improve your life. That's mm -hmm. kind of our mission. So the the biggest thing that we do is to help people to create badass lives. And in a nutshell. Being authentic, being genuine, communicating um, as genuinely and authentically as possible, and just kind of being real, learning how to be real and learning how to come out of your own closet and be your authentic self. Right. Uh, I, I struggle with that sometime on my video. Sometimes. Everybody does. Yeah. Um, and also, I would like, uh, before that, um, what what make you what you said bad uh why why badass life why why do we need that Tell why do we need a badass life so why wouldn't we want a badass life <laughs> first off but second off what does that actually mean so a badass life to me and to us kind of means to again be your genuine self and so many people have uh struggles with being their real self and when we're talking about coming out of your closet, it doesn't matter sexual orientation, preference, identity. It's about being you and sharing that with the world. Well, we've been watching Supergirl lately because we love DC and Marvel. We're right. total superhero junkies. And so she was having this struggle with like coming out and being herself mm -hmm. and like showing her superpowers to the world. And I think we are so afraid of our own superpowers. Yes. That people will see it. And then if we show our superpowers to the world, then we have to maintain that level. You know what I mean? We've mm -hmm. got like to maintain our own bar um, because if we slip in front of people, then we look stupid. And, and they might laugh at us. Right. So I think that's the biggest struggle we have as humans is just to show our real authentic self. And I think it was perfect because you were talking about blasting holes in the walls. Well, that's a part of your superpower. That's a superhero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for that. Um, you guys watch Supergirl? That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, I watch Supergirl. Um, okay. wait, what's your favorite, um, what was it, DC or Marvel character? Even though that's awesome. huh. Well, I'm digging Black Panther lately. That's our latest favorite. Yeah. Who's my favorite? Hmm. I have not watched it yet. It's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. I love Iron Man. I think one of my favorites would probably be Daredevil. How come? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just the cool. ability to shift perception and to use uh, more senses than most people are aware of. So it's kind of a psychic superpower, but it's not really psychic, but it mm -hmm. is, but it's not, but it is. I think you can tell a lot about a person by the superhero that is their favorite. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, how, how? How so? I never actually under Really? Yeah, because yeah, uh, everybody has their own personality. And as human beings, we identify with similar personalities. So a superhero, for example, would be a version of your best self. Okay, so I'm going to rethink this. Um, who would I identify? I love Black Widow mm -hmm. because she's got the ability to get into people's minds and get them to tell the truth about themselves. Mm. And so that's kind of what I do for a living. <laughs> so if you can tell the truth about yourself, it's an epiphany for you to go, oh, that's the real me. What mm -hmm. I've been telling the world has been a total lie. And that's really hard to maintain. So in reality, it's harder to maintain a lie about yourself, what you think is authentic and presentable, mm -hmm. than it is to just be yourself. Right. But you have to get over the fear of being judged or being rejected mm -hmm. and all of those things. Or yeah. being alone. Yeah. Yeah, I do agree with that because, you know, so many of people, because um, I try to do a funny video, but I like that the way um, you guys do it. You guys do a very informative, informative way of uh, presenting your video. But you guys have fun in it. Oh, absolutely. We have fun in everything we do. One of your, uh, but this is actually the first time I actually interviewed two people. Oh. <laughs> well, we're one unit, though. Huh? We're kind of one unit. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah, so we can come as a package deal. Mm. How did you guys get into um, all these um, uh, knowledge and informative way of doing things? Because I was curious about how you guys are very open minded. Mm -hmm. A lifetime of going through shit. Yes. <laughs> trauma. Right. Um, we both came from really traumatic backgrounds, you know, a lot of emotional abuse and neglect and a lot of um, relationship trauma. So, I mean, I think you don't do what we do unless you've been through a lot of hard knocks yes. and overcome them. So uh, a lot of the skills that we've learned have been uh, to learn them to heal ourselves first. Mm -hmm. And then realizing that, hey, we're really good at this. Let's help other people. Right. And that's kind of the, the biggest piece is to be a healer, to be a leader, to be somebody who helps other people out in the world. Help yourself first. And that's kind of the motivation for everybody is how do I become a better person? How do I live better in the world? How do I fight back against injustice? How do I learn more so that I can... I can be a better person so I can um, help more people. All of those things really come from the primary motivation, which is you. Well, so when you look at your story, your story, every single part of your story is training you to be the person that you want to be. Well, you know, every single person has their own hero story. Yes. And I mean, this our, our journey into being uh, coaches and healers comes from our hero's journey, mm -hmm. where we had to go into the cave and face our own fears and demons, kind of mm -hmm. like Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. He's yeah. really facing himself in that cave. Mm -hmm. And like, he's got to realize that, oh my gosh, the thing that I thought was the most evil is actually part of me. And when you face that part of you that you're ashamed of and and just reveal it to the world and go, this is me and this is my journey, good mm -hmm. or bad or whatever you judge, I don't care, but it's mine. Yep. Then you become the hero and can help other people travel that road. And that you've already been. Yeah. So I think that's in a nutshell why we're, you know, why we just have fun in our videos and we're authentic because we mm -hmm. don't really, we're not afraid. It's just fun. Yeah. I'm blessed to get, uh, uh, have you guys on the, uh, um, on the show because wow. Like, cause I, I've been trying to, I'm struggling with the fact that I want to put like, like stuff that I want to merge, like, you know, business or, you know, law of attraction, you know, uh, you guys have, um, where it merged that's related to me in some way. Right. Cause mm -hmm. there's, uh, where, you know, they have business stuff where they said, you got to niche down. Um, but I wanted to be free of that. Um, uh, but I want to know more about astral projection oh okay we're just gonna right, that's like a fun little one Do yeah because no, basically i was like wow I, I i need to know more about this uh can you guys explain uh to the audience what is astral projection and how do we access uh this? Okay. okay so astral projection is basically you've got a scale of astral projection mm -hmm. you've got like very slight astral projection, which happens when you're daydreaming, really. Yep. You're kind of like popping out a little bit and, and then a little bit deeper when you're sleeping mm -hmm. or meditating. Yep. So when you're sleeping, you're really deeply astral projecting, but the problem is you're not aware of it. <laughs> you know, unless you really practice lucid dreaming. Then you've got like the hardcore people that sit and meditate to like astral project and do things like remote viewing, which mm -hmm. is um, kind of... Uh, it's a form of astral projecting. It's basically taking your consciousness out of this physical body that you're in and into some other state or place, whether it's across the world or across the galaxy. And there have been people that have proved that they can do this. They'll mm -hmm. like project out and read something on a plaque somewhere or, you know, something like that. So there've been uh, documented, study, studies. documented studies since the 1800s of people who could remote view. Mm -hmm. And it's remote viewing is something that a lot of intuitives use to gather psychic information. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's levels of sending your consciousness out. Mm -hmm. So a very light kind of daydream state to a very heavy, you're in a deep, deep trance. Right. And your consciousness, a lot of your energy is projected out. And so the funny sense. thing about this one is that there are, um, I mean, in psychology, it's called dissociated complexes or, um, or what's the, uh, depersonalization would be another one. Um, and there's another word that I can't remember right now, but it's basically where certain people have sometimes through trauma 
been ejected out of their body or kind of tend to go out of their body easily as a defense mechanism because of whatever pain they incur in this body, in this life. So there are people that have a high propensity or it's much easier for them because of the story that has been their life, they pop out really easy. And then others of us have to work harder to achieve that same level of being able to detach and come back. So the, the key component when we're looking at astral projection or, or remote viewing or anything like that is the ability to step out, but also the ability to come back. And when we're talking about that, we're talking about, uh, I'm sure you've heard of the silver cord, um, which is basically the tether of your consciousness to the physical body. Um, that's something that can't be severed. So all of the fear-based astral projection or out-of-body experiences where your silver cord might get cut off is, it's not really real. Well, and I think a lot of those fears come from people who have uh, got experienced that dissociation where they're dissociated because of a trauma. Mm -hmm. So that when, so when they're psychically astral projecting, they're seeing a lot of fear-based things that are really a projection of their own psychosis. So those are the people that come back and start the myths about the astral field, really scary and there's mm -hmm. demons and they're going to eat you. A lot of that might be coming from that person's mind. And when we're talking about different planes of consciousness or dimensions, um, like Heather's talking about the places that hold fear, those are basically just an individual soul or spirit's construct for whatever they're trying to work out. So in human, in human experience, we have these constructs that we create in our life to help us work out an issue, um, mommy issues, daddy issues, whatever. We create this story in our head and the same things spirits do. Spirits create this story in our head and it becomes their reality. So they manifest this, this kind of... Um, this reality that they get stuck in. So that would be, um, uh, what's the uh, the in-between state, the Spirit. purgatory or or whatever, where they kind of have this state of punishment or this this dimension where they're, they're continually punished. Well, they're trying to work out the reasons for why they feel punished. And once they get through that, then they elevate their consciousness, their spirit to a higher level, and they get out of that hell or that purgatory that they've placed themselves in. Well, there, there's three, I know we had this complex of the astral projection, right. but there's three things to remember to kind of simplify it and bring us back to like uh, more of a simple understanding mm -hmm. is if you're going to practice astral projection and work on it as a psychic development tool or mm -hmm. a, a personal growth tool, remember to work on your personal fears, the things yes. that you're afraid of, because when you project out into the world, you're going to be confronted with your own fears mm -hmm. just like when you do like an ayahuasca trip it's the same kind of brain state except ayahuasca slams you into it the second thing is understanding that you're going to see two different kinds of things if you astral project one is you might remote view and see things that are in the physical world mm -hmm. that are just physical matter and the other thing you might see is the things that are made of energy mm -hmm. which can be spirits or um, thought forms which are projections of other people's thoughts so the things that people might see in the astral plane that they find fearful might just be the projection of someone else's fears. Right. So to, to the biggest tool you can take into, and this is why you work on your fears as you're doing your personal growth, the biggest thing to remember in the astral plane and astral projecting is to be neutral about what you see. Yes. Because what you see is not going to hurt you unless you become fearful and you're actually hurting yourself. Right. For example, a spirit who identifies as a demon, um, well, if you come across that and you go, oh, cool costume, and realize it's just their story, then it doesn't have anything to do with you, then there's nothing to be afraid of. So when you're in the astral plane, just recognize that it's a place of energy where things are created from thought. And anything is possible. So don't take what you see literally. Okay. Okay. A lot of. A lot of uh, I was thinking about you guys watch uh, Supernatural. Yeah, we've seen the show. because no, I was relating to what you were talking about. What do mm -hmm. you think of the show? It's a good show. It's really fun. Yeah. I think we watched the first couple seasons, then we then we skipped around. We haven't gotten back to it. We tend to like binge watch. But sometimes we have uh, we have Netflix ADD. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for that. Okay, um, what uh, what was it? 
I'm gonna answer. Oh yeah, why did? Oh uh, no, you're right. Uh, how can we? Uh, one of my friend Wade he said, how can we help ourselves and who? Uh, and others to implement healthy methods to solve problem uh, pain points we uh we all uh also or have okay um and i think uh and you said it was wayne yeah wade wade wade, wade. okay so um i i hope that we kind of wrap this in a we understand this this whole concept so it's kind of how to stay focused when you're making a change in life for yourself and for the people around you. So number one is to realize focusing on yourself is the primary goal. Focusing on you making a change will, as a natural byproduct, affect change in the people around you. So a lot of times we get caught up in trying to save the world, but we don't start first with ourselves. So right. Shifting that into, okay, you're, cha you're making a change for yourself and that's gonna help the world. Um, and the other thing is that changes are um, done in small increments over time, otherwise the mind is going to freak out. You can't make a huge change all at once, so bouncing all over the place, well, that's a, that's a natural part of the brain trying to figure it out. Um, but coming back to, and this is what we call a, a focal point. So coming back to a focal point, if you want to make a change in your world, if you want to, if you want to affect a lasting change, you pick what that change is. And then when your mind wanders and when it goes off onto something else, you just bring it back to that point that you're trying to make. Well, let me put it in Supergirl terms. So Supergirl just got said, I'm ready. You know, my, the plane's crashing. I got to go save my sister. She goes out. She feels her power. She saves the plane and she's ready to go. She's like, I don't need any training. I'm like, I kick ass. She no thinks problem. she's ready to go. But then she's confronted with all these fears as she is in these situations and realize she's got to do some work on her own. She doesn't stop helping people, but she realizes she's got some fine tuning. First, she's got a lot of pride. That's like, I don't need it. I don't need help. And then her sister like cuts her down a few notches and kicks her ass. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, okay, you're right. I need to stabilize my gifts. Yes. And that's the key. She needs to stabilize her natural ability. So she stabilizes it. And now, you know, she's getting stronger in overcoming her personal shit, right? And that's the that's the thing is that we build this foundation. We have these monumental experiences that are amazing. We blow open and we know what we're capable of. We discover like an astral experience or an out-of-body experience. We're like, wow, that's amazing. And then you go to train and you continue working on that skill. If it's something that you want to do, you have this big experience, and then you come back and you do the foundation work of building that skill set to where it becomes natural for you to achieve those states easily. And that goes with anything, whether it's business, whether it's uh, marketing, whether it's um, personal growth, whether it's psychic or spiritual development. All of the things that you do in life come from one skill set, and that is the skill set of your entire mind. So your mind creates your reality. Your reality is, um, is thereby your perception, I'm, I'm sorry, your perception creates your reality and thereby creates the entire world. So how you choose to perceive the world is how you're going to see it. So let me put it in a couple of different ways that are relatable to life in general. Like, um, so the healing event or the personal growth path goes like this. You have that monumental experience or a stabilizing experience, like an ayahuasca trip or mm -hmm. um, just... I go to church every week, you know, that might be, you know, I don't, but <laughs> like, you know, you, that might be an event for you. You go to church every Sunday to like give you that energy, that boost, that mm -hmm. itself is not the personal growth, but that right. keeps you, that stabilizes you have these events. And then in the week you like work on your stuff, like didn't do too well there. Then you go mm -hmm. back and you do, or the, if you're AA meeting or your business meeting. So we have these events along the way in our life to like get us back on track, get mm -hmm. us focused, people that support us until right. we're strong enough and we're stable and we can we can go it alone and we're great. And then we go to the next level. So, and that's kind of the cycle of stabilizing your work. So mm -hmm. the event is important because it changes your psyche in a really fast way, but it's not gonna stick unless you do, do that kind of boring work in the middle of like, journaling your thoughts or reading the book or you know doing right. the work or going to the gym every day and speaking of book there's a great book that i would recommend to anybody and that is called maximum achievement by brian tracy it basically tells you that you can do anything 
All you have to do, and you can become the top in any field, all you have to do is learn as much as you possibly can about any particular subject. And before you know it, you're in the top 2%. So increasing focus is just, it's about changing habits. But to change habits, um, sometimes you need like a check-in with yourself that's that's powerful, that right. kind of gets you back on track. A big movement or a big experience to show you what you're capable of, and then you do the work to get there. Uh, thank you so much for that. I, as I, I was listening through it, you guys understand at a higher level than um, most people, because I've been trying to explain to people that uh, it's what I see and how I observe things is that you guys understand about the law of attraction as I listened to you, you were talking about Brian Tracy. Mm -hmm. And most often not, people come into the law of attraction and they want to manifest this thing, mm -hmm. but yet there's another high consciousness or they, they haven't seen a part of another aspect because I'm trying to explain that there's skills and other, because I, I can see that you guys are really higher level of thinking and however what, like, what can you um, give to the audience who are into the, you know, law of attraction? What do they need, first of all? Okay. Law of attraction is a great place to start. Um, the first and biggest, most important key point is to recognize that you have what you desire, what you want, and you have subconsciously what you believe you deserve. Not what you actually deserve, but what your subconscious mind believes you deserve. And when they are out of balance is when you're away from your goal. You haven't created the foundational work, what you believe you deserve, to match up with what you desire. Once you do, when you do the foundational work, when you do the self-growth, when you uh, do the vision boards and the, the manifestation and the mantras and all of these things, then that subconscious mind starts getting on board and then they match up and boom, you get what you want. And the second part of that is how do you find out what the hidden thing is, what you think you deserve, what you believe you deserve? Well, those have roots in, you know, maybe your your parents said, you're never going to make it. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you know, a piece of crap or whatever. You don't really know what those are because they're so buried. Mm -hmm. You just know, I want to be rich. I want the hot girlfriend. I want the big career. I want all of these things. So how you figure out what this is that's hidden and fix it and get it on the same page is to look at the why you want what you want. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say, you know, I want this this hot billionaire boyfriend because um, if I have someone really amazing that loves me, then I'm lovable. Right. And or, that, that's a core component. That's a driving force. So if you find out the why you want what you're trying to manifest, then you might find out why it's not manifesting. Because if you're um, motivation is I want this because it'll make me look better to the world or I'll be accepted because I have status now mm -hmm. or I, now this lovable person means that I'm lovable, even, you're never going to get it. And even if you did get it, it still wouldn't solve the problem. Because you need that person to make you worthy. So therein lies the flaw. So if you can do the personal work of mm -hmm. I'm lovable, I deserve you know this, I can do anything I want, I'm right. a superhero, then you manifest this like that. And that brings us to, um, and we did, a, we did a video on this. It's, uh, it's not on YouTube, but it's a, it's a video that we did in one of the courses that we've got. It's the matrix of consciousness. So when you're looking at the foundational elements that are out of balance, you're looking at a, a trinity. You've got the mother archetype internally inside of you. You've got the father archetype inside of you, and you've got the child archetype inside of you. If any one of those is out of balance, that's where your issue is. You resolve that, you become your own perfect father, you become your own perfect mother, and then the perfect child gets to play again. That's when you're in balance. Mm, that's really amazing. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Holy Trinity. Um, I was thinking about how can we understand can't hear you. It, it keep going like, you know, for the people, is it okay? So how can we, let's solve this problem. How can a person who don't like knowledge, but like imagination, how can they, um, uh, is it 
if is it okay to go out of balance if they use imagination but not knowledge or which way that you see it I, well, okay einstein said imagination is better than knowledge yes <laughs> because yes. through imagination you achieve knowledge mm -hmm. and then once you receive that knowledge because you've imagined you can go find the pieces you're missing and the other element to this for me is that you can't fuck it up it's life there's no possible way that you can make a mistake and if you look back on every single mistake that you ever thought you made and you look at what that taught you or what that's teaching you now, then that mistake becomes a lesson. It becomes an opportunity. You get to transform the experience of that into something that helps you to grow instead of something that's wounding you. And imagination is the gateway to the subconscious and the superconscious. The subconscious and the superconscious are the places where you hold bigger, more vast pieces and parts of information and avoiding learning or, or the logical mind and, and those things, you can't really avoid it because we're in a human experience. So our primal brain has to use logic to some degree, even if it's to avoid learning, which is kind of funny. Well, you've got three, everything comes in threes, right? You've got knowledge, you've got imagination, and you've got wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, you need all three to have a balanced intellect. Yes. If you just have knowledge, um, you and and you don't have the wisdom to use it correctly, mm -hmm. or you don't have the imagination to do something with it, you might know all of this book learning, but you don't have the imagination to implement it into the world. That knowledge does you no good. Or mm -hmm. if you have all this knowledge, but you don't have the wisdom to use it wisely, mm -hmm. the same thing. You're just going to be a jackass that knows a lot of stuff. You're yeah. going to be that irritating guy at the party who's like, you know, duh, 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 duh. Well, actually, you spell it with a Y. And they always win at Trivial Pursuit, but they're just assholes. So, yeah. And then you've got the other person who is just as intelligent, just as smart, and knows that they don't need to correct anybody because everybody's on their own journey. But you do have to balance them. So yes. if you are like really heavy in a place where you're using a lot of imagination, then let yourself play in that imagination, come back from it and figure out um, what are the missing pieces of knowledge that I need. Because do, we do see people that rely only on imagination and mm -hmm. then they, they can't ground it and do something with it. Right. So that's where you need to kind of find out the knowledge uh, that you need to implement what you've imagined. And everybody has places where they can level up. Everybody has places where they can improve their skills. If you're great at imagination, well, then maybe it's time to take a business course and, and learn more of the logic or the math or whatever it is to round out your mind because it's all about the mind anyway. And you only have one mind. So level up the skills that are out of balance and then you become that genius. Well, I see this a lot um, with, we've got millennial kids who, uh, kids in general who want to like, mm -hmm. I want to be a video game designer. Right. This is like a huge thing with kids. I want to mm -hmm. grow. I love video games. I'm going to be great at it. I know exactly how I can make this game better. And it's got this huge imagination, but they haven't taken the time to do the hard work of finding the knowledge that it takes mm -hmm. to learn the algorithms and the programs to actually implement it. They go, oh, this is really hard. So I'm just going back to playing video games. Right. So you have to, at some point, uh, imagine imagine, imagine, but then find the pieces and know that that's not, that's not, it's a little bit hard. It's a little bit difficult to do mm. that boring kind of stuff. But if you have a big enough why, you can get through the boring parts. Right. So it's important that your why is big enough. So imagine that gives you your why and that inspiration and find knowledge you need to make your why a reality. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, I do agree with that. What do you guys think of aliens? Of what? Aliens? Um, aliens are kind of the new angels when you think about it, because aliens are a construct that the human mind is using. Uh, angels were a construct way back when that, uh, that particular people would be using as a way to communicate with something bigger than you. So angels and aliens are pretty much something bigger than this world that allows you to communicate with the galaxy or... Back then, it would be heaven or communicating with God through angels. Um, it's the same kind of a concept. It's just a different construct. So as far as aliens, do we believe there's life on the planets? Matt? 
mathematically, that, there has to be. Yeah, absolutely. My dad worked for NASA during the space program in the 60s, mm -hmm. the 50s and 60s. Um, and we used to talk about this topic all the time. There's, and well, well, now we're discovering life, you know, sustainable planets way more mm -hmm. than we thought there were right. that may not have like a sentient life, but it has other kinds of life on it. So are there aliens that fly around and visit us? Who knows? I mean, it's it's not totally provable. Everybody's, you know, uh, everybody's got a different take on it, a different story on it. But when you look at that, um, every person's individual story that they have or or relation that they have with aliens or concept that they have of aliens tells more about that individual's journey than it does about whether or not aliens are real. You know, I don't, this is a tricky this is a tricky topic because it's one that's, you know, we can, it's fun. It's very It's a fun. lot of fun and it's a fun to imagination. It's a fun to imagine with mm -hmm. this one. Um, and there's, you know, it's not something that you can say yes or no on. I mean, I have my theories about it. Like sometimes we really want there to be aliens so badly that are visiting us in their saucers. But if they are that advanced, they're probably not using ships. They're right. So it, it's taking, that's like a really, Think of astral kind of inefficient it's, journey, right? And think of astral projection that we kind of started this whole thing with. Think about how um, a more advanced life form could easily travel across the galaxy in their mind much faster than they could in a in a space boat. So it's an unanswerable question. There's been lots of UFO sightings, so right. a lot of them are not real. A lot of them might be. So you don't know. But it's fun to play. Yeah, it is. It is, it is fun to play. Yeah, that's very true. Um, there's uh, one question that um, Katie to ask. The issue I have is being in a very different place mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. One growing and changing fast, the other shifting as well with resentment. So, how would you know? Would okay. And this was Katie? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so for Katie, it's the realization that um, that's simply an indication that there's some part of your being that is out of alignment, mostly from fear or from something that happened probably when when um, when she was younger. So you've got this this part of her that is holding a resentment, and this resentment is actually the key component because that's the place that's out of alignment. So when we look at the resentment, we sit in the resentment and allow ourselves the freedom to experience the resentment, that is the fastest way to clear the emotion that is out of balance to find the piece underneath that really needs to be loved or needs to get some anger out or whatever it is. So the thing to remember that is that resentment, at the bottom of resentment is anger. And at the bottom of anger is a fear. Mm -hmm. So if she can trace that resentment down to what she's angry about, mm -hmm. what is somebody, she believes someone has taken from her or what she's not getting, mm -hmm. and then g trace that anger down to what she's afraid of. And give herself the freedom to experience those emotions. And it's it express the anger in a good, in a good healthy way right. through something positive. Mm -hmm. And then you can shift that. So what happens when you're on a personal growth path? And so there's nothing wrong with her personal growth path. Right. What's happening is that you elevate certain parts of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you work on your spirit, you work on your mental, you work on, you know, these kinds of things to elevate. But what happens is those lift up and this part that is underneath that's muddy suddenly becomes more obvious mm -hmm. because you've just, you know, when you like clean your windshield and your car and you don't clean this window, you realize how dirty this window actually is. Right. It was never any dirtier or any cleaner. It's just you notice it more now. Because you cleaned another part. So she's clean, done all this work. So now this is becoming more obvious. It was yes. always there. Yes. So if she works on it, it it's actually a gift mm -hmm. because now uh, she sees it more clearly and now she can work on it and elevate that up to that. So right. that's personal growth. Sometimes personal growth is chaotic and uncomfortable. Yes. But so is creation. Wait, wait, can you say that again? I said so is creation. Creation is uncomfortable. It's a it's a hot mess while it's happening. Mm, but then, yeah, so I mean, think about art. Art is a, a creative mess until the finished product is done. How can you how can you access your psychic ability? Practice. 
Well, <laughs> like, yeah, practice. Uh, awareness. Um, Awareness, awareness and practice. And we actually have a couple videos on YouTube um, specifically about practicing and exercising your gifts. Um, we also have another one on mediumship, like a full hour training on mediumship. That's on YouTube. And then we've got a couple videos on in exercising your, your psychic abilities. Um, so there's, there's a couple different techniques to use. And one of them would be like clairvoyance is a big one. So a great exercise for being able to see better is to take an object and focus on this object and then close your eyes and let that object recreate in your mind. What you're doing is you're exercising the visual cortex of your brain even when your eyes are closed. So that is the, the avenue that visual information comes in in that part that processes the visual stimulus of the external world and the visual stimulus of the internal world. So using that as an exercise, you build up that psychic muscle of being able to see and you just get better at it. So when we were talking about uh, Brian Tracy and maximum achievement, if you want to get better and uh, become an Olympic level clairvoyant, then you're gonna practice every day and you're gonna get better at it. And you're gonna read all the information that you possibly can about clairvoyance and how to see and how to exercise. And you're just gonna keep doing it. If you have a big enough motivation, it's going to be easy. If you're all over the place, well, then maybe your motivation, you haven't found that motivation that makes it easy for you. Well, kind of to simplify, because I, I like to demystify this, because mm -hmm. there's a group of people that are intuitive that are like, only special people, you have to be born with a gift, yes. which I think is total bullshit. Yes. Everyone has the ability it's just bringing your awareness into where you're already doing it and exercising more everybody has had the experience of hearing a song in their head and then the song comes on the radio or mm -hmm. thinking about a friend and then the phone rings and it's them mm -hmm. or you know standing in line at starbucks and you can feel the person behind you and their emotions without turning around those are all psychic natural psychic abilities and everybody does it so it's just a matter of becoming aware of how you're already doing it and then bringing more awareness to that and practicing it and playing with it and pretty soon you're getting bigger and bigger and better and better and the other element is letting go of the fear that you're going to do it wrong anybody who has become an expert in any field has done so through practice and failure and continuing to move forward in that avenue i don't care if it's business or psychic development the tops in the field get there through practice but so many of the people are afraid, psychic. You're right. Um, and also, it's like people are scared of psychics. Mm -hmm. I don't know and why it's a natural ability. It's yeah. a natural sense. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are like afraid of like witchcraft and occult mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I think yeah. it's the average person. That can but, usually um, come from a um, a construct that they were taught or chose to believe. It's from watching. Up. It's from watching movies. And from it's, watching it's, movies. it's from Hollywood. Right. I mean, the, the only reason we're scared of the occult is because of the uh, what we what's been crafted by Hollywood because it sells movies, or mm -hmm. we've been put in fear because of something in church, or we're, right. we're our fears come from other people's fears that have been taught to us. Yes. And this comes down to um, a primal pack mentality. So when you're growing up, you've got this pack that you have to fit into. At first, it's your family. So in order for you to fit within your family, you have to pretty much be on the same page. So even if your truth is different, in order to fit in and survive, you're going to have to fit into that pack. This gets bigger and bigger when we go out into friendships, when we go out into um, different groups that we, that we hang out with. So the, the group that you hang out with and the, the family that you were raised in and all of those things instill those programs, but it's up to each individual whether they choose to continue to perpetuate the program. Well, sometimes, we're, let me give you an example, a girl example. Because sometimes it's just we, we have, we, we're afraid because we're supposed to be afraid, because we fit in to be afraid. Right. So you've got this is this I can remember this ex specific from like junior high school. There's like a bug and all the girls like jump up on the table. Oh, it's a bug. And they're like, oh my god, I'm so oh gross. And I'm going, the bug is this big. Let me just step on it. You know, and so it's like, 
Well, what you're jumping up on the table because that's the girl thing to do. Mm -hmm. And and I was just like, boom. They're like, oh, gross. I can't believe you did it. I'm like, why are you acting like that? Mm -hmm. So for me, I was like singled out because I was like, it's just a bug. Stop it. But it was like, it was that peer pressure to, you mm -hmm. know. To fit in. To I have pack. to show that I'm afraid of this mouse because it's a girly thing. And it's a, it's a pack mentality. So it's the same thing with let's all be afraid of ghosts or, you know, if you're not afraid, then, be a cult. then you know, there's something wrong with you because you're not afraid. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I do agree with that. The, uh, you, what do we, what do you call it? You what? You said the what mentality? Pack mentality? Pack mentality. Pack mentality. Can you explain that uh, to us? Please? Uh, pack mentality is basically the part inside of your primal brain that needs to be accepted. So uh, we've, we're all human beings and, we're, and a human being is an animal. So when we're growing up, the, we have to be accepted by the pack that we're in. So in the wild, if we are afraid that we're going to be rejected from that pack, in the wild what that means is as a cub, as a little animal, we're gonna get rejected from that pack, we're gonna get kicked out, we're gonna have to fend for ourselves in the wild and we're probably going to die. So that fear of rejection within our brain creates a very real response in our body that if I get rejected, I'm going to die. So it will avoid anything that it may perceive as being rejected so it doesn't get kicked out of the pack to protect itself from dying. Well, I think going back to the original question about the occult and all of this kinds of stuff, we've created stories around it to mm -hmm. make it scary for all sorts of different reasons. But when we, let's let's look at this realistically, people, it's the 21st century. Why are we still acting like we want to burn witches? Why are we still being superstitious? Mm -hmm. You know, we're sending people into outer space and we're still still we're still superstitious about a bunch of stuff that shouldn't be fear-based at all. Right. And when you look at it from that perspective, space travel is witchcraft. We're not in the Middle Ages, people. Because, so. because witchery or magic or all of these things, it's simply science that hasn't been discovered yet. Yeah. Uh, what I know about you with your channel is I, I remember I was, um, you put science into your video, too. Why is that? Because some people leave, will leave out science and put in, you know, with the whole, what they know and, you know, the intuitive. But you guys are very, like, why is that? Because it's, it's a balanced, um, it's a balanced reality. If you neglect or reject any piece or part, then you haven't learned enough about it. When you, when you learn more about any particular field, I don't care if it's science or if it's uh, mysticism or whatever, then you begin to realize that it's all the same thing. We're all talking about the same thing, whether it's science, whether it's magic, whether it's uh, religion, whether it doesn't matter. Every single individual is trying to understand their reality through science, through mysticism, through any anything that they're doing, they're trying to understand their own personal individual reality. It's just different languages yes. that talk about the same thing. And my dad, who's actually still alive, he's 98, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, is a mystic and also a scientist. Like yes. I said, he works for NASA, but he has all these abilities that I have. So, mm -hmm. and they go together. Yes. They're the, they're the same package. And so if you look at um, the concept of soul retrieval and shamanism, which is a big mystical, let's go find a piece of your soul that was lost and right. magically bring it back and integrate it into you. Well, it's the exact same process, but just with different costumes and uh, techniques. Then in psychology, where in psychology, it's a dissociated complex where you split mm -hmm. off a part of your psyche because of some childhood trauma, so it's not integrated. So the psychologist takes you down through hypnosis. They help you find that dissociated complex. They reintegrate it into your psyche it's without the, mysticism. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Oh. So there's no real separation between science and magic. So shamans were practicing psychology thousands of years ago. Absolutely. It's just today we call it psychology. Right. This is very cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, how did you guys came together to create the, uh, your YouTube channel for Zen Rose Garden? That's well, we had a lot of questions from clients that continued to come up. Mm -hmm. 
So we just decided to make videos around some of the common things that people ask us so that they have a resource mm -hmm. to go to, you know. It's better to answer the question in a video that we can send somebody to instead of repeating the same information over and over and over and over again. It makes it more efficient. It, it's more efficient use of our energy and our resources and our time to get the message out to more people instead of repeating. Well, that way, when you come in for your private coaching session with us, right. um, you, you can get straight to like more personal stuff. Deeper levels. And so you can go look at the general stuff and then, you know, yeah. And do your when, homework in between kind of thing. And then if you need something that's uh, specifically tailored to your experience or your growth or whatever, then you book a session. We go through what you have going on personally because you've already learned the basics. So it's just a resource, but yeah. it's it's become a lot of fun. So right. it, we have fun with it too. Yeah. It's it's also a creative outlet for us because mm -hmm. we kind of have time to play. Yes. Yeah, I, I can see that. It's really fun. Thank you for making it fun. That's, that's yeah. Really fun. <laughs> well, then our goal has been achieved because yes. another reason we created the YouTube videos is that so many topics like this, the people that are teaching them take Make them it. so seriously yes. and it, it's, it's not fun and sometimes it's really boring and or too heavy or too out of reach for the average person. And you're talking about imagination and knowledge. It's way more efficient to learn when there's where, where, when it's fun and imaginative. Yeah, when there's a play element, it makes work so much easier. If you're not playing with whatever you're doing, you're making it too hard. That, uh, I remember, you're, uh, you're absolutely right. I remember uh, mate, I had a YouTube channel a while back and I made one video, but it was for, was it? The law of attraction. It was a book with you, but there was a guy said uh, there was a he was talking about oh there was a guy on YouTube channel and he make it not serious. I was like what? But people get into this law of attraction, personal development too serious. So I think that they need to get away from that. But that's my opinion. That's my opinion. Um, absolutely. What is, what is your definition of for you guys uh, winning? Of winning okay well of winning it's for me winning is a series of uh overcoming personal challenges it's not about beating somebody else out it's about can i uh, level up do my personal best and then what's my next personal best so yeah. winning is 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 always improving and beating my level yes and um as far as that goes uh winning is basically to me how in line is your external world with your internal truth? How well that, did you nail it? Yeah, how well <laughs> did you nail it? And um, that brings us to another, we've got a, a Facebook group where we kind of help people to, to become badass healers and everybody's a healer, regardless of what you think. Um, so we've got that Facebook group and then we also have a special email list where we're basically, it's the uh, relationship building revolution where people learn authentic communication, how to be themselves. So when you're inside and your outside match, you're happy. If you're inside and your outside are not matching, there's, there's discomfort, there's disharmony. So the key to all of life, success, winning, all of that, and I know, I know that's, uh, that kind of goes very much in line with, with this particular question, success and winning are the same thing and you win when you match your inside and your outside? So for me, it's a little bit different, success and winning. Um, the winning, like I said, is, is personal best. It's like meeting your challenges, doing better. Aligning with, like David said, aligning your vision with the outcome, that's winning. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for me, success is having contentment and peace of mind, yes. regardless of how much money I have coming in, regardless of how much I have to do. It's having contentment and peace of mind mm -hmm. and living my life fully. Not uh, success comes when I'm not, oh, when I get this, I'll be happy. When right. I get this, I'll be, when I get the next big house, I'll be happy. Yes. That's not success to me. Success is, I'm so, so happy with my life right now. I love my kids. I have peace of mind, I have contentment. That is success regardless of what I've got in the bank. Or where you're going to go. Right. Because if you're not happy right now, and if you're living for the next high, the next um, moment where you're winning, the next achievement, then you're not living in the moment. And winning is a drug. It's not. 
it's not a reality. It's not a, a do better. Yes. Mm, okay. Um, thank you so much for that. And oh, Doctor Strange. Yes. 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 Another oh, one of my. Favorites. Oh yeah, that's one of my favorites. Yes. I forgot about Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. <laughs> yeah, he's after with Black Widow for me. Yeah. Yeah, the reason why I brought it up because it, it, it is associated a lot with your guys' kind of like channel because it mm -hmm. really, like, really, um, because it deal with the actual projection, it deal with visualization, it deal with all the you know stuff. What like, what what do you think like, um, what do you like about it? Potential. Yeah, Doctor Strange, I think, is just one of my favorites. I I totally thought when you were asking what my favorites were, he would have been on that list, but um. Because he's all he is about manifesting. He's very metaphysical. So yes. all the all the Marvel characters, he's the most metaphysical. Yes. Where it's like totally expanding the possibilities of the mind. In meditation, multidimensional travel. And they've created his character out of like real um, metaphysical theories and concepts and practices. Yep. And in um, in Doctor Strange, you've got the study element, you've got the practice element, you've got the application element, you've got the quietness and stilling your mind element. All of these pieces and parts are actual practices that make you better at using more of your whole mind, which creates more of your whole reality out into the universe of possibility. Mm. And that's one of the favorite things that I like about Doctor Strange. I just like the part, and, but it does. It, um, but it does come together and um, as a whole for the how every uh, the thing that I study like witchcraft is all using the mind. It's har harnessing because I've seen it a lot. It's law of attraction and everything we they do. It's all about visualization. Everybody does it, right? Mm -hmm. And then, and then, but it's almost it's like the same as the law of attraction or you know did you like black widow when you were little or how did you get into black widow say that again the last part you said did you like black widow when you were you like little black widow, or, or did you like black uh widow when you were a child or i didn't actually know about black widow till a few years ago hmm. so i can't remember who my favorites were as a child um probably superman mm-hmm he was, he was a big favorite. We didn't have as much, when I was a kid, we didn't have as many Marvel movies out. Right. And Wonder Woman. Or DC. Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman and Superman were probably my favorites. Mm -hmm. and Aquaman, actually. Aquaman. Not She-Ra? No. <laughs> she's, she's not a Marvel or a DC. I know, I know. I don't know why I no. like Aquaman so much. What superpower would you guys have? Or like to have, or what is it? Uh, hmm. Flying or invisibility? Shifting time. Yeah. Shifting time. Well, why? For you, and then after that. Okay. So why? Why? Mm -hmm. Oh, flying just because super fun. I could like go to Jamaica <laughs> this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Saving money, just get the backpack on. Um, invisibility. Huh. I think that for you might go into observing the world. Yeah, observing, observing. Without changing. Right, without being, without Im observing behavior without impacting my surroundings. Right. Not necessarily to spy, but to gather information. Mm hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay, how about for you? Uh, okay, so for me, um, bending or bending time. Well, it also it kind of goes bending space and time. He wants um, to be Doctor Strange. Well, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but the uh, for me, it's about uh, kind of like squeezing the most out of reality, squeezing the most out of what's possible, and going into the different angles of if I take this situation. And if I had done this, what would that reality be? If I had done this, what would that reality be? And um, how can I best impact my entire surroundings and kind of choose the path that fits best for the maximum 
um, effect. I think David just needs a day planner and uh, yeah, right, <laughs> a vision I, board and a day. Yeah, because I think you can get that with like more time efficient practices. Oh, I do, but that's right. that's also the thing that I've been working on. So I've actually been implementing the ability to bend space and time by how I show up every day, for real, for real, like <laughs> legitimately bending space and time. Because, and here's here's my here's my take on this: time is a perception. It it's is. not a constant like we like we learn in in physics. It's a perception because if you have if you're in school for an hour, it may feel like forever, depending on your perception. If you're having fun out playing with your friends, that very same hour may fly by. The only difference is the individual perception. So time is perception and you can bend time if you shift your perception. Mm. When you talk about perception, perception fill a huge role in how people behave in the reality. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. How, can we, uh, how can we shift that perception if people want to change the reality so basically um you look at a situation that you're experiencing or witnessing or engaging in a conversation and you can either choose to perceive that as a negative experience or as a positive experience if you choose it as a negative experience it's going to weigh you down it's going to make you stressed and frustrated and and anxious and or you realize that you're the one who's controlling your own reality in here. So if you back off and kind of take a deep breath, refocus yourself back to your present moment and look at the situation again, you start to see the blessings in a situation. Well, I think you have to shift your, flip your brain around in yes. that old saying like, oh, I, I, I believe what I, I see what I believe. You whether you are right or whether you believe that's, you are right or whether you believe you are I'm, wrong, either way you're correct. That's not what I'm saying, but that's what you're saying. Thing. Um, I believe it when I see it. I believe what I see is actually false. I'll see false. it when I believe it. Uh, it's actually false. We right. actually see what we believe we see. Yes. So, you know, what we see, we put a lot of judgment on. So if we can be more neutral in a situation and look at what we're seeing and how we're judging it, that mm -hmm. might not actually be what's going on. Right. You know, we just, we tend to see what we already believe in our mind. And a great example of this was um, the Native Americans when the, when foreigners came to, came on boats, Native Americans didn't have a concept of what a boat was. So they literally could not see the boat they could not see these people until they appeared on the beach, like magic. I read a book, it's almost the same thing as what you say, it's called, it's by Vision, called the Code of Extra, it's talking the same thing about what you mm -hmm. said. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, where can we find you? Uh, Basically on any social media at, at Zen Rose Garden. Garden. Uh, you can find us on our website, zenrosegarden.com, um, Facebook, Zen Rose Garden, YouTube, uh, YouTube, yeah. I just I, had, uh, I, sorry, sorry. Um, I just had a thought. Why did you name your YouTube channel Zen Rose Garden? Because you have it symbolic. Like I see the rose over there. Uh huh. Yeah. The um, basically, Zen is a state of peace. Rose is one of the highest vibrating flowers. And garden is where you do the work. Well, garden is a symbol for your soul. Right. Um, Zen is kind of reflecting on our whole uh, cracking the code of what's sim simplifying everything and right. finding out what's underneath it instead of all this fluff we put on top of it mm -hmm. and overcomplicate it. So Zen is getting to the truth, the simple truth for everybody. What what your simple truth is. Essentializing. And rose has always been um, important for me. It's my flower and I mean, it's my birth flower, but also uh, the rose, um, when I was going through healing, my friend who's an artist actually painted this and gave it to me mm -hmm. and said, this is because you are now blooming and opening up and becoming what you are meant to be. So the three words just kind of came together in kind of a perfect, Yep, Wait. it came it came together about six months after we met, and um, we were kind of like talking back and forth about a name for our business. And I was in a state of in, in a state of meditation basically while we we're having this conversation. And 
it just kind of clicked as this was like next to our, our bed and we were having this conversation and the name just like it solidified in my mind as to here we go. And it was like, oh my God, and it totally fit. It totally made sense. All of these other elements, again, this is the power of the subconscious mind. When you set your intention for a solution, that bigger part of your subconscious mind will work in the background to find you the best solution, even better than your logical conscious mind could have figured out. So there's a lot of meaning to it. It's, yes. it's really about helping people understand their most essential, passionate, mm -hmm badass self and helping people to grow into their authenticity and having peace in your soul so that's it in a nutshell thank you so much for your time thank uh, you really, thank you been, uh, i enjoyed it i enjoyed it thank you for letting me uh have fun with this uh interview it's really amazing. oh we had a Absolutely. blast thank you yeah. so much for having us we we totally enjoyed it totally enjoyed yeah. it because we got to geek out with you and like talk about stuff we love yep yeah thank you i do too My pleasure okay, thank yeah. you so much well, Thank you. Follow them. On oh, wait. Like my video and thank you for our guest today. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.